Hey guys, this is a quick overview of how I did this RBD destruction sim. I did it back then when I was only getting into simulations and particularly RBDs. So there are some mistakes here as well as some questionable nodes. Uh, this simulation is by no means perfect. Keep that in mind. Also, this is not a tutorial, so I'm not gonna go into details. Okay, so let's dive in, disable render flags and go to our source. Our source is a random OBJ I downloaded from internet. It's free, so you can download it also. Transformed it, blasted the stuff I don't need, transformed it once more. Now we have 25 by 25 meters. And then I separated pieces for the fracture and I separated them by the materials. First set of frames, second windows, <clears throat> balcony, balcony floor, roof, just in case you want to destroy it, walls and foundation. Also this OBJ didn't come with the beams and floors between the stories, so I modeled them. Nothing fancy. Then we go to the fracture. I object merge our frames and I put them through the loop so that each frame uh, gets uh, shattered. Looks like this. Then I assemble and assign a unique name. This is very important for the constraints. So always do this when you assemble. Uh, always uh, name it something different. File cache, uh, do it with every piece of geometry I have. And as you can see, I also put down this wrangle node here. What it does is it calculates the distance between this sphere, which is the area of our explosion, and our geometry. And it does uh, this through this function XYZ distance. And uh, it assigns uh, active attribute to our geometry, to our points. You can do it through the groups, but I decided to do through here. Uh, it's easier to control later, because as you can see, this is our area of destruction. Everything else is going to be inactive. You can do it by this. You can just scale your explosion and everything is procedural. That's why I did this through XYZ distance function. Okay, <clears throat> so now we go to the force, our explosion. Uh, at the point, I transformed it here. This is the place where it's gonna explode. Put down pop network. Uh, it's gonna come at sixth frame and it's gonna last for a couple of frames and then disappear. Let's check it. Boom. This is our explosion. Scatter points inside of it. And then <clears throat> add force. Uh, this is our force. I did this through this VAP. I got the bounding box of a sphere. Added minimum and maximum distance divided by two, effectively calculating the center of a sphere, then subtracted uh, our geometry from the center, normalized it, multiplied with the noise, added, with, uh, added to our normals, and plugged it into force and also normals. Also I promoted a couple of parameters, so you can change the scale of the force and also like direction and stuff. For example, you want to do this. So force is going to come here, not here. Yeah, this is our force. <coughs> then we go to constraints. Constraints. These are our constraints. 
I object merge our wall, connect adjacent pieces, scatter points on them, and then I do the clustering. Uh, clustering is done so that our uh, destruction looks more real and it doesn't look like uh, your regular Voronoi noise. It's ugly and it's <clears throat> it's not real. Uh, so I do the clustering through the near point. Get the near point of the points in the second input. I export them into cluster, which is integer. This is the attribute. Uh, but I also can do this through Voronoi noise. It's actually easier this way. So you get the Voronoi noise, uh, randomize seed, and put it into CD as well as cluster. But you see, as you can see, you can. Do, 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 do. Mm, sorry. Yeah. You can do it through near point or Voronoi. Doesn't matter. Okay, so I got uh, uh, got my cluster attribute. Now I promote it from point to vertex. Then I do this bit of code. Uh, now you don't have to do it this way. Uh, nowadays you have RBD cluster node, so it's easier done through that node rather than through this code. Uh, but what I do here is I mm, I assign constraint name for the clusters for the clusters. Uh, for the glue inside of clusters that keeps it together, which is glue in, and the glue outside of clusters, which is uh, glue that binds these clusters together, which is glue out. Now, uh, this is a threshold uh, when it, when it is matched uh, by the force, uh, it breaks. So as you can see, glue out, the um, glue between the clusters is lower, so they break easily, and the inside, um, glue in is higher so they don't break as easily okay i do clustering for yeah for inside second wall balcony i don't do it for the roof and for the frames for for, for the frames it's just regular adjacent pieces mm -hmm. and just regular glue okay so we got our constraints. Now we put it into RBD sim. In RBD sim we get our pieces, all RBDs. Uh, we get our solver, and in order to bring this force, this explosion, to affect our geometry, uh, we do it through the geometry wap and plug it in the post solve input. Inside of geometry warp, we use near point. Okay, the second input is bind to the point two, so it, it's bound to this one, to this force. So it's bound to this second input. Okay, so we get the near point of these points uh, of our explosion. Uh, we get the position of each point, we measure the distance between points and our geometry. We fit it so that uh, the biggest, the, the closer to the epicenter, the bigger the force is going to be. So I inverse it and multiply it with the force that we also get uh, from our explosion. We add it to the force, which is zero in this case, and plug it into force. So we have our force affecting our geometry, our RBDs. Now <clears throat> we get our constraints, glue out, which is quite low, glue in, which is higher. And in order to break these constraints, we use subsolver. In subsolver, we use uh, relationship geometry and we object merge the geometry from RBD, all this geometry, as you can see right here. And in this wrangle, uh, we calculate force. So uh, we get the force attribute from here. And then uh, force is a vector. So we measure, um, we get the length of the force 
and if the force is higher than the break cone, uh, we remove the constraint, we remove the primitive. Yeah, that's it. I think that's it. Okay, so now we have to do the glasses, um, destruction of glasses. Object merge our windows. Blast them, apply color, <coughs> and object merge our explosion and color it red. Oh, here it is. Then we attribute transfer a color from the explosion, promote it to primitives, scatter points, put them in the, dub, <coughs> in the pop net, and the pop net starts at 8th frame. And we crush the particles by Z and Y axis. Boom, this is our explosion. Explosion of uh, destruction of glasses, of windows. <clears throat> okay, so then we copy some geometry on top of these points. And the way we do it, we get our box, three pieces, blast them by name. And uh, it's connected to the stamp, uh, by stamp, uh, to the random. Uh, variable and random variable is connected to the element attribute which is here so we get uh, based on points random number fitted to three because we have three uh, pieces uh, converted to integer and uh, bind it to the element as you can see uh, it's being referenced here it's pretty normal stuff so then <clears throat> yeah and uh, I merge it with the with the glass with the windows so here's our windows being destroyed okay now to the debris Uh, have our, we have my simulation cached out. I unpack it. I isolate the pieces I need by the velocities. Scatter points on top of them. I put geometry, copy geometry to the points, uh, the way I had done it with glass assemble and then put it into DAP network which starts at 15th frame and just goes forward like this mm. yeah I add some noise to the velocities on the Z axis that's it okay so now our debris then I put down debris source debris source does this it follows the elements okay I I add some noise to the velocities calculate density density is lower uh, as it ages and put it into pop network. Okay, good. Now to the debris. Now this sim. Uh, okay, I scale up. No, I scale down the P scale. Pyrosaurus. Add density and temperature volumes. Add some noise <clears throat> and rest rise. So this is a father for our pyrosim for debris. 
So they fall down and then they will leave a trail. Let's go see this. <coughs> okay, nothing fancy. <coughs> These are power cache. As you can see, there is some stepping issue. I should have upped uh, the sub steps. Oh, whatever. Okay, now uh, we have to add some um, smoke that comes from the debris that fall down on the floor. We have Taurus here, scale it up a bit and transform it at the mountain. Uh, and also, <clears throat> I also scale it a bit and then do this trick. I import the position of the second Taurus and subtract uh, from its position the position of the first Taurus. Multiply it with noise and add some vector direction and plug it into V and N. Also, I offset it by, by the time, so we get this continuous flow of velocities. <clears throat> okay, pyro source, uh, add some noise and then I rasterize attributes. So this is a source for our pyrosim. Okay, pyrosim, once again, nothing fancy. Some dissipation, disturbance, turbulence, etc. Volume source. And I believe that's it. We have our cache here. Voila. Okay, guys, thanks for watching.